and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we'll learn about TypeScript arrays, tuples, objects, and enums. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Our starter code today is the code from Lesson 2, as we now begin Lesson 3. I'm not really going to use this code though, so I'm just going to select all with Control A and press backspace to remove that code. We can Control S to save the file as well. After that, let's go ahead and open the terminal window with control and the back tick. And let's once again start TypeScript with TSC and then the watch flag, which is dash W. We configured all of that in the TS config file back in lesson one. So I'll press enter. Now it will begin watching all of the TypeScript files that we create inside of the source folder, and it will convert them or compile them to JavaScript and put them in the JS folder here that we have inside of the build directory. So now let's go back to our main TS file. I'll close the terminal window, but TypeScript will continue to run. And we're going to start with arrays. Now let me define three different arrays like we normally would in JavaScript. So I'll say let string array. I'm going to set this equal to an array that contains three strings. One, let's say hey, and we'll put Dave in here. So that's the first array. After that, let's create a second one. I'll say let guitars. I'm going to set this equal to an array and I'll put in a strat, which is short for Stratocaster, if you know about guitars. The next one is a Les Paul. And then let's just put in one called a 5150 to reference Eddie Van Halen's guitar. Notice that is a number data type. Now a third array, and we'll say let, and we'll just call this mixed data. Let's set this equal to an array that has EVH in here. Let's once again put in a number like 1984, and let's put in some Boolean data, true. Now let's see what TypeScript thinks about these. And when I say think, I mean infer, as TypeScript figures out what data type these arrays are. So as I mouse over the string array, we get some IntelliSense help, and you can see the string array is an array of type string. So TypeScript expects all of the data that goes into this array to always be string data. Now let's look at the second array. So I mouse over guitars, we get IntelliSense that says, okay, this array can have string and number data. And if you remember from lesson two in this series, it's a union type, and that's what we see there. And when you use a union type with an array, you have to put that in parentheses. So we see the string and number inside of parentheses there. Now let's look at the mixed data type. And as I mouse over, IntelliSense helps us again. And we see this is also a union type, and it says the data here can be string, number, or Boolean. So let's see what we can do with these arrays. Let's first look at our string array. So we'll have string R here. And let's set the first element equal to a number. And let's see what TypeScript thinks. No, it doesn't like that. We get the red squiggly lines once again. It's complaining. So let's see what the message is that TypeScript has for us. And it says type number is not assignable to type string. So TypeScript knows we're only going to have strings inside of this array. So if I go ahead and set this equal to the name John, TypeScript has no problem. As you might guess, any other data type would cause a problem here. Now besides setting a specific element like that, what if we said string array and we push something onto the array. So I'll push 42. Nope, we have a complaint here. And when I mouse over again, once again, type number is not assignable to type string. So we're not limited to the three elements we have here. TypeScript does not put a limit on the length of the array or even what order the type of data is in when we have these union types. So I'll go ahead and add another string here. I'll just say, hey, again, and you can see there's no problem. But now let's go ahead and do something for the guitars array. So I'll say guitars, and I'm going to set, let's say the first element again, which is in position zero, and let's set this equal to 1984. Notice there's no problem, even though we had string data in the first position of the array to begin with. So as long as it is string data or number data, or these types, 
TypeScript has no problem with us switching those around. So we could have a number or a string here in the first position. It's not locked into being only a string in position one and position two, for example. Now, likewise, we can add more data onto the array at the beginning or the end, for example. So let's say guitars and I'll say unshift and let's add Jim to the beginning. TypeScript has no problem with that either because this again is string data. If we tried to add something like true, then we have an issue because Boolean data or the Boolean type could not be assigned because this only accepts strings or numbers. So we'll switch this back to Jim. Now, if we look at this last type of mixed data, it accepts all three types. So since I've used the keyword let and we can reassign these arrays, let's see, string array, if we tried to set it equal to the guitars array, we again have a problem because the string array is only type string and type string number, this union type, is not assignable to the string array. But we can switch these around and let's see here, guitars could be equal to our string array because it definitely accepts that string data type as well as a number data type. So it just didn't work the other way around. So as you might guess, mixed data could be set equal to guitars, but we couldn't do this the other way. So we couldn't go ahead and take our guitars array and set it equal to the mixed data array because it only accepts strings and numbers, and we've also got Boolean type in the mixed data. So that won't work. So just to highlight how the reassignment works, it will work one way when the mixed data accepts the string and the number of guitars, but you can't reverse that and have guitars accept string number and Boolean because it's limited to the strings and number types. Now let's define an empty array. So I'll just say let test equal to and set it to an array. Now let's see what TypeScript infers here. It is the any type. So TypeScript thinks any type of data could go inside of that array because we have not explicitly stated that it can only be string type or any union type of the different types of data. So TypeScript just infers any. Let's go ahead and assign an empty array now with a given type. So now let's say let bands, and here we'll say this is going to be a string data array or a string type array. So our array can only hold string data, and we'll just set this equal to an empty array here. So now if we wanna create an empty array like we did with our test array here, but we want to define the type of data that's going to go in that array, we can do that in advance by of course applying the annotation right here saying this is only a string array. And then after we do that, we can push data in here. So we could say Van Halen and it's fine. Of course, if we tried to make that a different type of data such as Boolean, that's not going to work. So let's go back to Van Halen and that is fine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the length of the array or the order of the types in the array does not matter to TypeScript. It just knows what types belong in the array. However, if you want to be more strict and define something that is locked in to a type in a specific element position and a specific length of an array, what you really want to create is called a tuple. So I'll note that here, tuple. And now we can create a tuple. So I'll say, let my tuple and I'm going to set this equal to an array that has a string to begin with, and then a number, and then Boolean. Now we could just stop right there, and we have defined the tuple type, but let's go ahead and set it equal to something. So I'll set it equal to an array that has Dave, and it has a number, and then it has Boolean data. So this again is a tuple, and as we mouse over, we can see IntelliSense here says, this has string, number, and Boolean in those specific positions, and it also has a specific length. So this is more strict than an array. And likewise, let's create an array now where we can say let mixed, and we'll set this equal to an array that has John, let's put the number one, and false. So as we look at this data, it looks the same. We've got a string, we've got a number, 
and we have Boolean. When I mouse over though, it says, this is a union type with string number and Boolean, and it's an array. If I mouse over the tuple, you can see it's a tuple with string number and Boolean, although we just see the word tuple because I called it my tuple. Now let's see what happens if we set mixed equal to my tuple. There's no problem because mixed is a type of array with union type here that accepts string number and Boolean, and that's what the tuple has. However, let's take my tuple and set it equal to mixed. Now we have a problem. So why is that? It looks the same, right? Well, as we mouse over and see the IntelliSense message from TypeScript, you can see it says it's not assignable to type string number boolean because the target requires three elements, but it is possible that the source, which is mixed, may have fewer elements. That's because mixed is not required to have three elements in the array. That's what it has right now, but it's not required to. So TypeScript understands that it's a possibility that mixed may not have three elements, and so you can't assign that to a tuple that requires three elements. So in addition, let's try to add something to an element that doesn't exist in the tuple, and we can see a problem there also. We tried to add something to essentially the fourth position because it starts at zero, and we can see type 42 is not assignable to type undefined because that fourth position, that fourth element is not defined. And really the only place we could assign a number is going to be the second position. So here in the third position, it says type number is not assignable to type Boolean. And of course, we've already got the number 42 in our tuple, but it's only going to accept it once again if we put it in that second position. Okay, let's move on to objects. So I'll put a note here and say objects. I'm going to scroll up for just a little more room. And now when we assign an object with TypeScript, we could just say let my object, and then we can say, it's a type object, and that's fine. That's an easy way to assign the object type, but what else is an object? If we stop and think about the fundamentals we know from vanilla JavaScript, an array is also a type of object. So if we were to reassign my object, we could reassign it to an array and TypeScript will not complain. And we can verify this with a console log and say type of, and now let's put my object here, Let's save this. I'm going to drag Visual Studio Code to the left of the screen. Then I need to go to our index.html and click go live here. It should launch this. And then I am going to press Control, Shift, and I to open the dev tools. We can see live reload is enabled. And we console logged the type of, which is object. So if I refresh that, it'll get rid of that live reload enabled. Let's go back to our TypeScript file and I'll press Control B to hide that file tree so we can see our console here to the right and all of our code to the left. So once again, my object is now an empty array, but that was reassignable because it is still a type object in JavaScript. If I scroll back up, we had an array named bands here, so I will come back down and say my object is equal to bands, and once again, TypeScript has no problem. We can also say my object is equal to an object just by using those empty curly braces, and that's also a way to say object, just like we use the word object here. So now let's create an example object. So I'll say const example object, and I'm going to set this equal to an object with curly braces, and let's give some properties here. So I'll just say prop one, and I'll use my name Dave, prop two, and let's use some Boolean data, true. Now this is an object. Let's see what TypeScript infers about this object. Example object is an object that has prop one and prop two. Prop one must be a string, and prop two must be Boolean. So if I scroll up here a little bit and take another line and say example object dot prop two is equal to 42, that's no good because, of course, we have Boolean data there. If I said false, that's fine. So it is already locked in to that Boolean data. Prop1, likewise, is locked into 
string data. So John is fine, but any number data or Boolean data is not going to work there. So we'd have to go back to a string like John. But what if we want to annotate the types like we have when we have created variables, when we annotate types here, or with arrays, anything like that. This is annotation, where we say this is a string array here before we assign the empty array, for example. So to annotate a type in an object, instead of using inference, as we have here, you can see we didn't specifically say anything other than this is an object, and then it inferred the data types inside that were string and Boolean, the uh, property types. So let's go ahead and use something now called a type. So we can say type, and then I'm going to say guitarist. And from there, we say equals, and then it looks like an object. I'm going to have a name, and here I'll say string, and then I'll have active, and I'll say Boolean. And then I'm going to have, let's say albums, and let's make this a union type that has string, or number types, and let's make it an array. So a string or number can be in the array for albums. So we just created this type called guitarist. Now, when we go ahead and create an object, so I'll say let EVH, I can just say this is a type guitarist. And from there, I can go ahead and set it equal to an object, and I can give the data I want. So here, name, I could say Eddie. And then after that, active, I'll say false. And then albums, and this accepts string or number type data. So I'll have an array, and I could say 1984, 5150. Then I could also use a string and say OU812. So now I have three different properties here, and we're using two different types with this union type inside of the array. And this is fine, but this is convenient because we have defined the types for our object in advance. So we can just say, let EVH, and then say, this is type guitarist, and it instantly knows what all of the property types will be inside. So when I mouse over this, you can see it just says it is the guitarist type. But now if I come up to the guitarist here and I mouse over, we can see it expects a name property with string, an active property with Boolean, and an albums property that has an array, which is a union type for string and number. So if I, for example, were to omit the active here, now we have an issue. TypeScript gives us a complaint saying, a active is missing from your object. You need to go ahead and add that if it's going to be a guitarist type. So I'm going to highlight our guitarist type here with EVH, which is Eddie Van Halen, if you're a fan of rock music, classic rock music. And I'm going to create a second one here. I'll call it JP, and I'll give him the name of Jimmy. Get the caps right, there we go. Jimmy, active, we'll make him true. And for the data here, different individual albums. We've got one. Let's give a string here for two and another string for four, for example. Okay, so now we have two guitars and I had JP in caps. Let me put that in lowercase. There we go. So now, since I use the keyword let and they're both guitarists and they both have the same properties, we could set EVH equal to JP. And there's no issue with that. However, if we, of course, removed our active here from JP, and we didn't say JP was a type guitarist at all, then we would have an issue, wouldn't we? Because it's not a type guitarist and it doesn't have the active property either. So you can see that's required. So let me go ahead and use Control Z and I'll just put all of that back. And then TypeScript is good because one equals the other. They're both the guitarist types. Okay, let's also note with the type that we have here, we can't add another property. So I'll say uh, EVH and then dot years or something like that and equals to 40. That's not going to work because we can't just add another property. It doesn't exist on the guitarist type that was predefined. So that's worth noting as well. Let's also look at how we can make a property optional. 
So inside of our guitarist type, instead of these individual guitarists that we've created, you would want to go back to the type. And let's say we want to make the active property optional. So we put a question mark before the colon. And so now when I mouse over and we look at the IntelliSense, you can see the property active is Boolean or undefined. It became a union type and it can be either of those types, either Boolean or undefined. If I delete that question mark, and I once again mouse over, you can see it's only Boolean. So I'll put the question mark back, and now that active is optional, I can delete active from our guitarist Jimmy, and I didn't mean to select all that, I just meant to do Control S, there we go. And now there's still no problem. So a guitarist can exist, without an active property because it's optional. With that optional property, can we still set EVH equal to JP? Yes, we can. They are still both the guitarist types. So now I'm going to scroll up, but let's look at how this might apply to a function. So let's say we have a function named greet guitarist, and then that function is going to accept a guitarist. So first, let's give a title for the object. So I'll just say guitarist, but notice it's not the type above with the G, it is a lowercase guitarist. And then we're going to pass the guitarist in. So see how we didn't have to specify the full object there with all of the different properties and types? Otherwise we would have to do that. And you could see that where the object is right here and you would start giving all the properties and types inside of the object, and we would just call it guitarist inside of the function. But now, instead of doing that, we can just say guitarist right here. And then, for the rest of the function, let's go ahead and finish it out here with the arrow, the curly brace. Inside of the function, I'm going to say return, and we'll use a template literal, so hello, and then we'll reference the guitarist object and we'll reference the name property and just give an exclamation mark there. So a very simple function. And then down below, we can call that function. So I'll say console log. So we see it in the console to the right and greet guitarist. And I'm going to pass in our JP object. Okay, I'll save and we'll see what we get to the right. We get hello, Jimmy. Now I'm going to show you something slightly confusing and that is not only can we use a type like we did for our guitarist type, there it is, which is what we've been using, we can also use what is called an interface. And it essentially does the same thing, especially here when you're starting with TypeScript, there's no point in getting confused about when to use a type versus an interface. And I typed inferface <laughs> because I've been saying infer so much, it's interface with a T, there we go. So interface, and then guitarist, no equal sign like we had with the type before. And now this works the same way. I'll save this code and everything is still going to work. So the, the natural question would be, when do I use an interface versus when do I use a type? Well, when you're first starting out, it's really preference is the way I've heard it described as well, because I don't want to confuse you about when to use each. We'll get into more of that as we get into more complex areas. However, I usually use an interface when I'm defining something I would think of like a class. And of course you might have methods on a class as well, but notice how this works just the same. So we have defined our object. Instead of using a type, we have now used an interface and it is still working in the code the same way. Okay, jumping back to how we made active optional right here, let's go ahead and remove that question mark, but let's make the name optional for just a moment. Now, if we make name optional in the guitarist, this could create a problem. Of course, we've got to put active back here as well, so I'll put that back inside of our guitarist for JP. But if name is optional, TypeScript knows that even though both of these objects do have values for name, when we look at this function definition, it doesn't really realize that. Now it could just make it undefined if the object didn't have a name. And so TypeScript is not complaining here. It would just provide undefined data, but you can't call a method on undefined. So if we were to say to upper case, 
TypeScript is not going to like that unless we make that optional as well. So if I remove that option, now TypeScript tells us we have a problem. So let's mouse over and see what the problem is. Object is possibly undefined. So just with auto completion there, you saw one way to fix that would be make that two uppercase optional only if this property had a value would we call two uppercase. But we could also check to see if it exists and that would also help us eliminate this error too. So here we could use what is called narrowing and here we would say if guitarist.name and then we would return our hello with the guitarist name and the two uppercase. And then let's go ahead and have another return because without a return here, let's see what it says now. The function itself is either going to return a string or undefined at this point. You can see the function as a return type that is a union type there. So let's go ahead and just say return hello. And that would be if we did not have a guitarist name because here it would return. So we don't really need an else. So I'll save that. And now you can see the guitarist has a name. So we returned hello Jimmy in the uppercase. But if a name didn't exist, it would just return hello. And TypeScript realizes that in advance. And that's one way it helps you eliminate errors here at development time, at compile time, rather than, of course, when the application is running as you would in JavaScript. So if I delete the name here from Jimmy, our JP, and now we go ahead and save because we made the name optional, we just get the hello return that we put here on line 59. And now let's look at enums since we have covered objects. So I will note that as well. And these are enums. I want to put in a quote from the TypeScript documentation here first, and I'm going to press Alt Z to wrap that code down so we can see all of it. And it says, unlike most TypeScript features, enums are not a type level addition to JavaScript, but it's something that TypeScript actually adds to the language and runtime here. So this is another feature, but it's not like most of the others that are simply type level additions. So it's something you haven't seen before in your normal vanilla JavaScript for sure. So I'm going to say enum and I'll create one here named grade. And now with that, I'm going to provide a U, which would be unsatisfactory in college level courses, a D, and then we'll have a C, a B, and an A. So this is our enum. So let's go ahead and log the value of U and see what we get. So we'll say console log, and then we can refer to this as grade.u, much like we would an object. Let's see what we get in the console when I save. We get zero. So these are enumerated and they start at position zero. So it's going to be, there you see grade.u equals zero just when I mouse over even with the IntelliSense. So it's going to be zero through four. If I mouse over the A here, you can see grade.a equals four. So if we want to change those values up, you could set the u equal to one to begin with and everything else will adapt. So now this is a one in the console, but look when I mouse over B and grade.b is four and the A is five. So just by starting out with one, the enum went ahead and advanced all of these by one. So it starts at one and it keeps them in order one through five instead of zero through four. We have now covered arrays, tuples, objects, and enums, and there is much, much more to come. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection, and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.